Hey everybody! Today's story time is brought to you by the Hazel Bunny and Matilda the Bookworm. If you've never read Matilda by Roald Dahl, you should. He's one of my all-time favorite authors. I also thought of a fun game and it's gonna be how many times does Mrs. J wear her Mar Vista sweatshirt in these videos? See if you can find how many times I've been wearing this sweatshirt in these videos. <laughs> All right, we're coming to you from the treehouse today. And Hazel picked a couple of great books. She picked Katie in London by James Mayhew. Her grandma, uh, Nora Wine, brought her this when she went to London some years ago. And she picked a great spring book called Zinnia's Garden, which is Ozidia's oh, Flower Garden, which is an awesome book by Monica Wellington. We love this book. When we moved to this house four years ago, one of Hazel's special requirements was that it had a zinnias garden. So I do try to plant zinnias every year. And that's from this book. So I will read you Katie in London and then Hazel's going to read you zinnias garden. Katie in London. See, Grandma and Grandpa Norwine actually, both of them gave this to her. London seemed very big to Katie. Big trains, big buildings, and big crowds. She held on to Grandma with one hand and her little brother Jack with the other, and they all got onto a big red bus and set off to see the heights. To see the sights, not the heights. See the double-decker bus? So cool there. When they got off, a trial flagger Trafalgar Square. Sorry if I'm saying things wrong. Grandma was tired. I'll just have a little rest, she yawned. You two stay by that lion, then I'll know where you are. Katie climbed into the big bronze lion and pulled Jack up after her. As the sun came out, the lion seemed to turn from gray to gold. Do you mind, said a very deep voice. It was the lion. Who said you could clamber all over me? We're very sorry, said Katie. Grandma said to stay with you. Then I suppose you must, sighed the lion. Now what should we do? I wanted to see the sights, but Grandma fell asleep, said Katie. Could you take us? Oh yes, please do, said Jack. Kind of reminds me of Aslan from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The lion that comes alive. The lion shook his mane. Hold on tight, he roared, bonding, bounding out of Trafalgar Square. How people sta stared, but the lion didn't mind. This is much better than lying in that stone all day, he said. You have no idea how cold my tummy gets. Now where shall we go? You choose, laughed Katie and Jack. I love the birds, all the pigeons. Mm -hmm. The lion took them to St. Paul's Cathedral. They gazed up at the enormous dome enormous dome. It makes me feel very small, said Jack. It's so tall it makes me feel dizzy, laughed the lion. Come on, let's go. There's so much I want to show you. There we go. St. Paul's Cathedral with the dome on top. Next, the lion took Katie and Jack to an old castle. The Tower of London, he said, haunted by the ghosts of kings and queens. Katie shivered. Don't worry, they only come out after midnight, said the lion, but you can see their crowns and jewels. The crown jewels were in a small special room. It was quite a tight squeeze for the lion. The jewels sparkled like stars in the night sky, but in all sorts of colors. Green emeralds, red rubies, and blue sapphires. Now they spell color C-O-L-O-U-R-S. See, yesterday Hazel was trying to pick an English language for Siri to speak, and she was wondering why it had Australian English, British English, American English, all different types of English, Irish English, and it's because of the different spellings. See, they say the same thing, it sounds the same, well, it sounds different accent, but the, some of the words are spelled differently. Afterwards, the lion pretended he was a ghost and chased Katie and Jack. Excuse me, called a man in an old-fashioned costume. You're scaring my ravens. Who's he, whispered Katie. He's a Yemen warder, said the lion. Sorry if I said that wrong. He believes that the towers will fall down if the ravens leave. Time to go. Mm -hmm. 
The lion decided to take them across the River Thames. They trotted on the, the onto the tower bridge. Suddenly an alarm sounded and the lights flashed. A boat was coming and the bridge was being raised to let it through. Stop, yelled Katie, but the lion didn't stop. He jumped. There's the tower bridge in London. Beautiful. But instead of landing on the other side, they landed on the boat. They chugged along the river, passing great ships and going under dark bridges. Look, that's the Globe Theater, said the lion. Shakespeare wrote some fine plays that are performed there to this day, although very few of them have lions in them. What's the big wheel over there, asked Jack. It must be the London Eye, said Katie. Why don't we go on it? You don't expect me to go on that thing, do you, said the lion, as they all jumped off the boat onto the south bank. Before the lion could say another word, Katie bustled him on board of the London Eye. Slowly the wheel turned and they rose high above London. The poor London turned rather pale, I'm sorry, the poor lion turned rather pale and began to shake. But soon, he, even he couldn't help enjoying the view. He pointed to the Big Ben. Goodness, it's nearly 11 o'clock, we must hurry. Big Ben is that clock. Ding dong. Have you ever seen Peter Pan? Peter Pan flies around that clock. You might see it in Mary Poppins, too. As they came down, Big Ben chimed 11 times. Katie and Jack jumped onto the lion and they raced across the bridge, past the huge clock and the houses of Parliament. They hopped in and out of queues of traffic, past taxis and red double-decker buses, past parks and grand buildings. They could hear music and drums. Beautiful. Hold on. It's the changing of the guard, said the lion. Follow me. Left, right, left, right. The lion marched behind the guardsmen in time to with the music. Jack and Katie followed all the way to the gates of the Buckingham Palace, where the queen is. Sorry, said a policeman. Only royal guards are allowed through here. So Katie and Jack jumped back up and the lion walked on past the palace. They hopped hoped to see a real prince or princess. Instead, they noticed a lot of flags and crests with lions on them. The lion smiled. I am very well known by the royal family. Why is that? asked Katie. Because the lion is called the king of the beasts, he said proudly. And as they galloped away, perhaps they did catch a glimpse of someone waving from a palace window. Do you see the queen? She's waving from the palace window. Thank you. And there's the lions. The crests that have lions on them. King, king of the animals. By now the lion's paws were beginning to ache. So they all went to sit in a leafy park. The lion dangled his paws in a cool lake. Jack bought ice creams with pocket money. Delicious, said the lion. I love Tutti Frutti. How are your paws, asked Katie. Rather sore, admitted the lion. I'm not used to all this walking. Perhaps you could catch a bus back to Trafalgar Square. There he is, having a tutti frutti ice cream in the park. Lovely, all the ducks there. So pretty. A policeman told them to catch the number nine bus from Harrods, the biggest department store. And I wish I didn't have to go back, said the lion sadly. Don't you like Trafalgar Square, asked Katie. Of course, said the lion, but I do get such a very cold tummy lying on that stone. Jack whispered in Katie's ear and they both smiled. They went into Harrods and came out just a few minutes later with a small parcel. And then they jumped onto the bus and traveled back to Trafalgar Square. A small parcel is like a small package. A parcel is a package. This is for you, said Jack, handling him, handing him the parcel from Harrods. We bought it with the last of our pocket money. The lion unwrapped it and laughed. It's a woolly blanket. It's to keep your tummy warm, said Katie. How kind you are, sighed the lion. Thanks for showing us London, said Jack. Next time I'll show you even more, said the lion. Katie then saw Grandma was waking up. The lion hopped onto his stone and kept very still. And as the sun went in, he turned from gold to gray. Hello, you two, said Grandma. Shall we go off to see the sights now? Oh, said Katie, I'm much too tired. I need a rest, said Jack. And they both flopped down on a bench and fell asleep. And that's the end of Katie in London. And there are some other Katie books, Katie and the Sunflowers. 
um, it's a great art adventure about her seeing um, Vincent Van Gogh's artwork. And you can see on the back, there is how much it cost in pounds. The, the fancy L instead of the dollar sign because it was bought in England where they pay with the pound, not with the dollar. That is Katie in London. And I was thinking as I was reading that book that I'm wearing this Matilda shirt today. And when I went to London after I graduated college, one of the books I bought and wanted to read when I was there was Matilda. And I remember I bought it by the Piccadilly Circus and this great little bookshop. And I still have that book. And I happen to be wearing that shirt. All right, it's Hazel's turn to read to you. She's gonna read you Zinnia's Flower Garden. The Great Spring Story. Oh, and I thought of something else before I give you Zinnia and Hazel is that I've been reading this great quote over and over again about how when you can't go anywhere, books can take you anywhere. So books help you travel when you can't go anywhere. So as we're all stuck at home right now and in quarantine, and we're just kind of figuring out this new way of being alive, let books take you where you can't go. All right, Miss Hazel, we're ready for you. She's coming. Zinnia's Flower Garden by Monica Wellington. I love this has some real Oh, this one's also from Grandma and Grandpa Norwine. That's funny. We tend to have themes with the family here. All right. And the art in this book is really cool. The color copies, the artwork's made from color copies of fabrics and photos, excuse me, many of which were taken by the author as she grew the flowers. The color copies were cut and pasted onto paper painted with gouache. The computer was not used in preparation of this artwork. So this was not done on computer at all. And she grew the flowers herself. How cool. Mm. Yeah. I got the kitty, my favorite grass and put it inside. Oh, you're so nice. Okay, do you need help holding this book? I'm gonna go show you. Okay, Hazel will be back, so I'll start. Spring has arrived and Zinnia is getting her garden ready for planting. She digs up the soil and turns it over with her shovel. She takes out stones and rakes the dirt smooth. The warm sun feels good as she works. She has her organic fertilizer, her garden journal, her kitty cat, her dog. Zinnia carefully plants many kinds of flower seeds in rows. She covers the seeds with dirts and pats it all down very gently. She sprinkles the ground with water. Sweet pea seeds, black-eyed Susans, Cosmos. And she's writing the journal there. Her journal says, May 3rd, very busy planting my seeds today. Such hard work. Zinnia waits for the seeds to sprout. The seeds need sun to shine and the rain to fall and many days to pass. It is hard to wait so long for her seeds to go. Grow. May 12th. Rain all day. Ugh. But it is good for my garden. And look, it has the different types of cloud. I've always loved this since I was a kid. Cumulus clouds, the puffy ones. Cirrus clouds look like sweeps. Nimbus clouds or rain clouds. And stratus clouds are looking like the ones that are like pulled. Okay. And then you have to turn it so they can see. I can hold it like this. Yeah. Every day, Zinnia checks her garden to see if anything has happened. Look, the first see seed Ling. Ling is poking its, its way. way up through the dirt. Stages Ma May of... May 20th, my first sprout today. Wow. Stages of germination. And I've been doing this in our house on a tray. Put seeds a paper towel with water and give some heat and they start to germinate and once they get around here then I can put them in the garden. Okay. Go ahead, Hayes. Now Xenia's garden is full of green Sp sprouts. Sprouts growing toward the sun. Little Stem. stems grow taller, little leaves get bigger. And little roots spurrow deeper into the earth. Mom, you just let me hold it. May 29th. Lots move. of sprouts now. I can't even count them all. I'll move. Yeah, no. I'll move. Your turn. Okay, go ahead. Make sure you can see it. Okay. Okay. Dina takes care of her garden every day. When the sun is hot, the in the soil, trash, and waters, her thirsty plants. 
June 17th, no rain for a week. My garden is so dry. And then here's pictures of the real plants that the author grew. All right, go ahead. She pulls up pesky weeds that try to crowd out her plants. She inspects them for greedy bugs. She measures how tall her strong and healthy plants are growing. Every day they get bigger and bigger. July 7th, my sunflower plants are so tall. I hate weeds. Go here so you can read it and they can see the picture. First thing in the morning, Zinnia runs out to check her garden. She is excited to see little bugs growing on many plants. July 18th, my zinnias have buds. I wonder what color they're going to be. And then you can see it has the stages, the life cycle of a butterfly. Eggs, Eggs caterpillar, chrysalis, adult, and then ready to fly. And oftentimes at our school, we get tons and tons of monarch butterflies because we have a lot of milkweed. Have you planted milkweed at home? We mm, took some seeds from school and planted some. You don't want to keep going? Okay. And then at last she finds what she has been waiting for. The first flower. One bud has bloomed. How beautiful. And what a sweet smell. There are many more buds that will still open. July 25th, my first flower today, and lots more to come. Amazing, a big monarch butterfly landed on my finger. God, they're always so lucky to get them on their fingers. Here's the pistil, the stigma, the style, the ovary, the sepal, the stem, the receptacle, the petal, the stamen, the pistil, they say are all the parts of the flower, the filament, the anther, and the stamen again more closely. And there she is with her zinnia. The garden grows and grows with blossoming flowers. Zinnia paints, reads, and picnics among them. Butterflies flutter, bees buzz. Zinnia's garden is her favorite place on these warm summer days. August 11, I love my garden. Look at all her pictures of these flowers the author grew herself. So pretty. I see black eyed Susans. I think those are asters, sweet peas, zinnias of course, sunflowers. Her flowers are all abundant. That means there's a lot of them. And Zinnia cuts them to arrange in bouquets. The fragrant scents of the flowers swirl around her in the warm breeze. There she is cutting some of her flowers. She's got a bouquet, a beautiful bouquet in her arms and the sunflowers. See, here are the different kinds. Oh, there's the, I was right, the aster, the sweet William. Those are really small, I think. Sweet pea, black-eyed Susans, Zinnias, snapdragons sunflowers, marigolds, and cosmos. August 21st, my sunflowers are taller than I am. One hot summer day, Zinnia has lemonade stand and puts up a sign, pick your own flowers. Customers come and gather bunches of flowers and drop money in her jar. What a lovely idea. I've seen pick your own strawberries, pick your own cherries, pick your own peaches, but never pick your own flowers. Don't forget to smell the flowers. August 28th. Busy today at my stand. Everyone loves my flowers. Pick your flowers. And it shows you some cool math too. 25 cents is a quarter. Four quarters makes a dollar. Five cents is a nickel. One, two, three, four, five groups of four nickels. Four gr five groups of four sets of nickels makes a dollar. So you have five, 10, 15, 20. Five, 10, 15, 20, get it? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 100 cents making a dollar. 10 cents a dime. Two groups of five dimes makes a dollar. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 100 cents makes a dollar. August 28th, busy today. Pick your own flowers. So pretty. See that? 10 dimes. Four quarters. And 20 nickels.
In autumn, as it gets colder, Zinnia picks the last flowers from her garden. She finds ripe seeds that have formed. They are ready to be collected. She will save them to plant next year. I do that. I think these are calendulas, because I have those in my garden every year, they do that. And it shows you what it looks like when it's dry, the parts, the stigma, the maturing ovary, the growing seed, the stamen, see how they've dried out, the seed pod, the petal, the stem. October 13th, lots of seeds. I'll leave some for the birds. That's one day after my dad's birthday. His birthday's October 12th. She'll leave some for the birds and save some for herself for next year. She is in the fall. It's a lot of months. Remember, she started this all the way back in May. Yeah, May 29th was her first journal entry, and October 13th was the end. So May, June, July, August, September, October. This was five months. The winter days are short. The sun is dim and the ground is covered with snow, but Zinnia is already planning next year's garden. When spring comes, she will be ready to grow her very own flowers again. And it shows the seasons. Winter, autumn, late summer, midsummer, early summer, spring. Maybe it goes the other way. <laughs> winter, autumn, winter, spring, early summer, midsummer, late summer. That's more the cycle, clockwise. And she's writing in her journal, December 27th, I can't wait until spring. And she's got her flower books and she's looking at the snow out her window. And it has some tips in the end about growing your own flowers. Have you been planting anything in your garden? Would you like to see some stuff we've planted? I'll show you real quick. Hey. I'm gonna take you down the slide. That'll be fun. All right, here we go. There's Charlie. I'm gonna put you downward. Here we go, down the slide. Woohoo! There's Hazel again. All right, we've been planting some seeds, germinating, I'm trying. I'm a renegade gardener, just do whatever. There's our apricot tree that Nova helped me plant and Winnie. And we put some jalapenos in. We didn't grow those from seed, but little starters. And chayote squash that my neighbor gave me, and he started growing those from his own. And then he gave me two, and those are doing great. Those all flowers all came from seeds. And that's okay, he can bury his toy. And here's some, here's some dill we planted from seed. See that little soft stuff? Dill you can put on your eggs. And this is a seed popping up. I think that's a sunflower. And these are garlics. Okay, and there's more. These are Winnie and Hazel did rainbow carrots. See those? And then my favorite is a potato plant. We literally stuck a potato that was going bad in the ground, and boom, we're gonna have more potatoes soon. I hope you can see that, let's see. Yeah, there you go. And then some more, and I think some of these, you and Winnie did these, right? Yeah. And then there'll be some more wildflowers that I think Christian planted too over here. All kinds of stuff. Tell me more about what you're growing in your garden. Or if you haven't grown a garden before, try saving some seeds from something and see if you can even just get them to sprout in your house. That's pretty fun. All right, bye guys. See you next time. Thanks for listening and watching.